hi and another good morning temperatures have been comparatively pretty high in uh, bangalore for the last one or two months and as temperatures go up people's anger also goes up i don't know really what is the connection maybe we get more irritable when you know it's very hot and you're feeling upset or whatever uh, it may be but the fact is that there are a lot of people who tend to keep getting angry now and then now if you saw the uh, topic of today it is cooling down an angry person what do we mean by an angry person the one person who will never agree that he is angry is the person who is the angriest people who are short tempered people who are intolerant people who get irritated very fast often have their justification i'm not really an angry person you know but i can't tolerate injustice when somebody is so sloppy and this and that when people don't listen to very basic things that i tell them you know it becomes very difficult for me to accept uh, uh, that and that is how they justify it but let's face it if you have pent up anger or if you are the type of person who keeps letting out your anger it can harm a lot of people particularly the ones who are closest to you starting with your own near and dear your family members moving out to your second line of social circle or people whom you are working with on a regular uh, basis or interacting with on a regular basis all these people get affected so today i thought we will talk about those of you who have somebody in your life who does not seem to be able to you know control or manage his or her temper and i'm sure we all have so here let me also tell you that there are some people and hats off to them mostly women who actually feel that it's okay if somebody near to me is a short tempered person for example i have known wives to say see he gets so stressed up and he takes up so much of load if he comes home and if he shouts at me it's okay he's letting out his uh, temper in a way it's good that he is letting out on me i don't mind it and more so you may notice this fatality among the you know illiterate or among the lower economic uh, uh, strata you will find somebody like your maid servant saying that my husband beats me up lekin kya karega sahab wo bhi itna thak ke aata hai na mai uski bhai ko mere ko nahi marega to kisko marega they have this fatalistic uh, approach and hats off to them how they can manage it but as you know many of us cannot there's a limit to how much we can handle so if i find that there is somebody you know who just cannot control or manage the anger and i have to be at the receiving end or it may not be me but i am seeing others suffering again it could be nearest and dearest a spouse can see the children getting affected because of the spouse's short temper now that can be very painful because i am a parent i don't want my children to suffer not even from their other uh, parent so that becomes an uh, issue something as simple as you know uh, handling uh, your uh, temper in public there are people for example who you know go to a shop and the moment the shopkeeper says or does something which is not acceptable because of this great concept that i am paying money so customer is the boss they start getting into argument they start losing their temper it could be because somebody is parking his car wrongly it could be that typical road rage that we talk about you know you are happily driving somebody comes and cuts across uh, you and this man lowers his window and gives out the choicest of abuses and then drives uh, uh, off so that can be very unpleasant even though that person is not actually shouting at you but being part of this scenario and being part of that uh, you know person's life can be quite you know effective i mean it can affect you very badly so 
what is it that we need to do first let's understand where this uh, you know anger comes uh, uh, from as i keep reminding you about so many other things in uh, life here also the same thing happen that is a lot of temper is imbibed in childhood if as a small child i see my elders whoever it may be my parent my grandparent my teacher whoever it may be significant elders if i see them being short tempered and yet being respectable members of society being regarded highly people don't point fingers and say how stupid this fellow is he keeps shouting all the time no they say oh he does not tolerate anything he gets very angry even if something like this um, happens and he is like this he is uh, like that so what is the message reaching to me as a child in my innocent days that it is okay as long as you are otherwise competent as long as otherwise you are okay there are people who justify also yes he is a very short tempered fellow but deep down inside you know he is a very loving and caring person he means no harm he just can't control his temper but not being able to control temper does affect so many people all around uh, you isn't it and as i mentioned one of the worst thing that does uh, uh, happen is children get affected very badly people who are short tempered in that pecking order or the hierarchy the child is the lowest so the child gets a brunt of this you know short temper of the adult and it may even become a vicious cycle the child grows up to believe that it is okay to be short tempered it is okay to shout it is okay to hit even and that cycle sort of goes on and on and uh, uh, on so people who have been exposed to violence in childhood please understand that their tendency to be violent or to be angry will be much uh, uh, higher similarly since we see very often that men tend to be angry and to shout or to be violent more often than women it is again partly because of the childhood that boys are told that it is a shameful thing to cry you are a sissy one of the best ways to bring out strong emotions is to let your tears flow to cry girls are allowed to cry girls are encouraged to cry boys are ridiculed if they cry and that suppression of those strong emotions turns into temper as the child you know uh, grows up the other uh, flip side of it is that there are a lot of women who when they grow up like this and when they have a lot of resentment and anger inside them they don't bring it out in the typical way that a man uh, does they become scheming they go behind the back and do things how often you have heard some young lady telling that you know my mother in law is completely different when my husband is around and when he is not around when he is not around she does the nastiest of things to me and when he is around she behaves so nicely that he doesn't even believe if i say this is what your mother does now you see that lady has learned certain crafty and unwanted activities for survival and she thinks the only way to dominate or to have control over her son is to keep playing these uh, games so this is also very important which sometimes gets neglected because she is not physically violent or she is not screaming at the top of her uh, voice the other interesting thing is that many 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 women tend to hide the temper of their loved ones it could be a daughter hiding the father's temper it could be a mother hiding the uh, temper of her son and most important a wife who hides the temper of her husband and the more she justifies it the more she protects him the more she tries to ensure that uh, you know he is hidden from uh, there that is what creates a lot of you know long term uh, uh, effects that when this person 
gets this feeling that I can get away with it. My own spouse is protecting me. His temper goes up further. And you will find typical, very successful men who are otherwise very competent, very respected, very looked up uh, to. But with their own family members or with their own children, they tend to be very short tempered. But there are ways and means of dealing with it. Before I come to giving you the exact practical points I, which I have listed out and made into a slide, how, what are the ways and means of doing it? Let me demonstrate to you by a little video clip which we made in our uh, studio. My colleagues are uh, there come here. playing the role what is of father and son. Adway, yes, come here. What is this? Can you understand simple things? How many times you want me to remind you? Can you understand? You such an indisciplined, stupid guy. Sorry, I would have dumped you into some boarding school. They would have taught you some sense. I'm so sorry, Appa. This is completely my fault. I understand where this is coming from. If you understand then what? You had told me clearly to do this work and I completely forgot about it. I'm so sorry. And I understand where this anger is coming from as well. All the time you're working hard, you're stressed so, so much. Your boss also gives you so much work and you're always... And at home you also keep stressing me. Appa, I hope you understand that I look up to you. I want to be someone like you. And I really enjoy the characteristics that you have and you are extremely competent. But you need to understand, I'm not like that. I strive to be like that, but I'm not. But if you could please, just one last time, tell me exactly how you want to arrange the books. And I promise, I'll never forget. See, there are so many youngsters, children, sons and daughters, who make so much effort in trying to you know, bring about a change in their elders, be it a parent, be it a teacher, be it a boss, but they continue to suffer because a lot of people don't understand. They don't acknowledge. As I told you, the first step is that they you know, become angry and they don't realize that they are so short tempered and that they are creating so many problems. At the macro level, this gets manifested if you see the way mob behavior is. The slightest provocation. There is an accident. One person is in a car and one person is a pedestrian or he is on a two wheeler. An accident takes place. Instead of helping the victim, trying to pacify things, trying to see that you know, he's taken for medical care and that his vehicle is put aside and traffic is resumed. They will all, you know, without any instigation, without a, knowing the background, they will start accusing and shouting at the person maybe who was driving the car. What are they doing? This road rage or this mob violence is only an indicator that we have this pent up anger inside us which we have not been able to manage or control or put in the right perspective. So in the anonymity of a situation like this, we suddenly let go of this and things can get very uh, violent at times also. The other area is of people who you must be hearing this word very frequently nowadays, who become narcissist. They develop a narcissistic personality. Without going too deep into you know, the understanding of uh, what it is all about and all these causes and all that, I want to focus today on the main topic that is cooling down an angry person. So if you are either yourself at the receiving end or you're watching it happen, like I told you, a person who sees the spouse being very, very violent with the children. So even though the violence is not directly you know, aimed at the partner, but the partner is hurt very badly because the partner is a parent and the partner loves the uh, children and does not want the children to suffer. So in either case, you know, what is it that we can do at a practical uh, level to um, you know, cool down this uh, uh, person because this person is important to you. This person, as I said, may be your boss or your father or your spouse or your 
even your child or whatever uh, it is. So what do we do? So what I've done is that I made a list of some of the important points. As I told you, the whole idea of these programs, the Saturday uh, FB Live programs is to have, so that you have some takeaway by which you can actually benefit and bring about a change in your life. So what I did was that I condensed and I jotted down the points and Anis has made it into a slide and I'm going to show you and run it through you for you to understand what are the ways by which you can cool down an angry person. Here's the first uh, uh, one. Study his anger pattern triggers. See what happens is that when he is angry, you suddenly you know, become aware of it. The moment he is not uh, angry, you forget it. But what I request you is to study his anger pattern and what are the triggers. At the same time, do not allow guilt to overcome you. There are people who say, yeah, I think I provoke him. Yeah, I think I am also equally at fault. I should not have done that. The moment you go into that phase, then you cannot help the person with the short uh, temper. So first deal with your own insecurity. Sometimes people feel if I confront him, then he will get angry with me or he will leave me or he will become even more violent. So whatever insecurities you have for taking up this uh, cause, please first deal with it. Become secure, become confident that this has to be done and I will do it. And also remember, have self-love. Build your self-esteem. Don't be afraid of loneliness. What will happen if I fight with this person? What will happen if I do this with this person? Nothing will happen to you, I assure you. In fact, if you succeed, you may get into a much better relationship and you will be helping the angry person at the same time. Okay. Now, before starting off, plan out escape routes. So when you are starting off with doing some exercises by which you are trying to cool down this angry person, if things get bad, what do I do? So keep something ready. Suddenly you say that I have to go to the washroom. Or I forgot we have to buy this, that shop will close now, I'll go immediately and get it. So if you can diffuse the situation before it gets bad, if you have it ready, you start with the process and if things go wrong, plan out the escape route and stop that inter uh, interaction with that person. You need to develop the skill called assertiveness. I've spoken about it earlier also and we have a good workbook for developing assertiveness. You can pick it up from the office if you want. But assertiveness is a skill which really helps you. Unfortunately, when somebody gets aggressive, the receiver of the aggression or anger does one of two things. Either the person reacts and it becomes a ding dong battle and a war, or the person gets very submissive and very passive, in which case the angry person starts getting more and more angry, starts getting angry. So develop this thing called assertiveness, which is the mean path. Very important, do not hide his faults. Seek family or professional help. I know of people who actually hide. No, 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 no. he is not actually angry. Only because of this, he is only once in a while. He is never like that. No. If he has a short temper, he has a short temper. You will actually be do doing a favor to him also by letting it come out in the open and don't take it all upon your own self. As I've written here, seek family or professional help. Ensure that you stay calm. If you start getting agitated, if you break down and cry, or if you're raising your voice, nothing can be done. So whatever ways and means you have of maintaining that calm, take deep breath, have a glass of water, do some jogging or exercise, do a prayer, whatever makes you to stay calm, ensure that you have done that and then only face up with the angry um, person. Then what you do is listen to the person. Very often I have seen that when the person gets angry and is shouting or raising his voice, if the other person interrupts even very briefly, the anger actually goes up. So what I request you to do is to keep your mouth shut and listen and identify keywords, identify the actual things which are provoking uh, uh, him. 
if possible give space maybe a simple thing like yes i think what you are saying needs a lot of working on can i have a little more uh, uh, time can i get back to you a little uh, later can we first have dinner and then sit and talk about uh, it like that try to create that either physical or mental space set boundaries very important i have known of people who have made it very clear you get physical with me and i am not going to tolerate it you do this 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 no it is not acceptable so certain things which are going out of control which are not acceptable set boundaries in advance when there is no conflict going on because i want you to understand that this has to be dealt with on a long term basis if that person is close to you it's not a one time uh, temper or anger that you are dealing with if it's some shopkeeper or somebody in the neighborhood you uh, may not mind it but here we are talking about working on it on a long term uh, uh, basis and throughout this process do what are known as healing affirmations i am upset i am disturbed i am hurt i need to keep healing myself on a continuous basis while i keep helping this person and managing to at least to some extent you know helping him to cool down his uh, you know outbursts or temper or whatever uh, it is there are some people as i mentioned earlier who are good sponge they say it's okay right now he's very disturbed he's taking out some other anger of his office on to uh, me or he's taking out this anger on uh, me something like that i have known of very understanding husbands who say that my wife and mother are perpetually at loggerheads and i know that when i am away my mother is not very nice to my wife and my wife gets very frustrated so when i come she takes out her frustration on me it's okay it's part of life we are after all life uh, uh, partners so that way if you have that ability you can really do uh, things now i come to the final part of the uh, thing what are the type of exercises or activities and all that by which you can help this person to you know bring down the uh, anger or bring it to manageable uh, uh, you know uh, levels so in this let's take just a few of uh, them about eight nine of them i have written here you can expand you can add so many more to it a simple thing is to write an angry letter keep it and look at it later when you are much calmer you will realize that your anger was not 100% justified so when you write down the facts all the accusation the anger on a piece of paper firstly it pulls you down secondly when you read it after a sufficient time you realize that you can rationalize and you can you know take it on a better basis another good better good activity is to write his name in big letters tear it or burn it say i don't like this person and this person is hurting me very badly so i'll write his name i'll cr- crumple that paper i'll tear it i'll burn it so in a non violent way you are bringing out your anger without hurting anyone else this a uh, very nice friend of mine did with a boss of his who used to be always shouting at him what he did was that he wrote the name of his boss with that uh, permanent marker pen on the sole of his shoe so even while the f- boss is shouting he would press and you know squirm his shoe on the ground as though i'll crush you guy going out he would put that uh, you know he would put his foot in some slush or mud or something saying this is what you deserve it worked for him you can try and see if it works for you other ways also are there beat a pillow punch a pillow or something uh, uh, put a cushion or something scream i have a friend who actually trains his uh, students he takes them out to manthan or any of these quiet places and encourages them to scream at the top of their voice that is one part of it that is a violent way of bringing it out beating a pillow or screaming the other softer way is do meditation calm your mind down take deep breath go for a walk amidst uh, nature and things like that then you have 
vigorous exercise. And along with that, giving yourself positive affirmations. Yes, I was very upset. I was very irritated. But after this vigorous exercise, I feel better. I keep reminding you, mind and body are connected to each other. The body is better, the mind is better. The mind is better, the body heals itself. This is an interesting thing that I um, found out. Call up this person. Speak to him whatever, one or two sentences, whatever you have to disconnect. And then start screaming at uh, him. Sounds funny, sounds childish also. But for some people it works. That's why I'm giving you a wide range. You can choose what you want. You can even create your own as we go along the uh, thing. There's this very proven technique called the empty chair technique. What you do is that you put two chairs facing each other. You sit on one and in front of you is an empty chair. Now you start shouting. You start uh, accusing. You start pointing out what you are doing to me and what you have done uh, to me by imagining that that person is sitting there. That itself you know, brings down the irritation to a great extent. But if you can do it, take it one step forward. Get up from that chair, go and sit on the opposite chair and respond the way you think he would respond to your acquisitions. It sounds very funny, but sometimes it does work. You get to understand what's going on in the other person's mind. Then there are people who do things like, you know, so many have told me, and when I'm very upset and when I'm, you know, really frustrated, I clean up the whole room or the whole house or my cupboard or whatever it is. Cleaning is like, you know, putting away all the unpleasant things as you remove the dust and the dirt. Giving weeds the name of the persons who have been upsetting you and pulling them out and throwing them away. And lastly, imagine him as a clown or a buffoon, as a person who need not be given any attention or any real uh, you know, importance. If you learn that, you can really manage to deal with a lot of people who are very, very difficult normally to handle, but you will still be able to handle them. So all these things are part of life. Whether you like it or not, inevitably, somewhere or the other, from time to time, you will be coming across or you will have to deal with an angry person. Management of emotions and management of stress are two of the ten life skills propagated by World Health Organization. But still, we don't take cognizance of it. On a continuous basis, we need to work on it. And as I keep reminding you, there is no other single factor that determines your happiness, your fulfillment, your peace of mind as good relationships. Good relationships, in turn, are managed by good communication. The other person is shouting, the other person is being abusive, the other person is being violent. You learn good uh, communication. In fact, you know, effective or transformative conversations is such a wonderful uh, you know, ability or a skill in fact, I have been invited next week after I do the FB, I am going to uh, you know, record a TED talk on this transformative conversations. How you can lead on the conversation or your communication or interaction to bring about a transformation not only in yourself and the other person, but in your relationship with that uh, person. So after a few days, it will be put up on the internet. You can see that that is uh, you know, going to happen. But if I've given you some food for uh, thought, please come out with your comments and your questions. I already see a few which are there. So if all of you can put in whatever you want, we'll quickly go through as many as we can uh, today. And But that will be uh, done, as they say in the TV serials, break ke baad.
Hi, good morning. I don't know if you heard me chatting with Anis behind the screens. Yeah, did you tell a yes or a no? <laughs> okay, so um, another thing, uh, Ali has mentioned such uh, lovely things that uh, we need to do to cool down, right? Uh, one thing which I would just want to also add on to this is that uh, if you're if you're getting very angry, if you are that angry person, then please ensure that in that anger or or in wanting to deal that anger, you don't do binge eating. Many of them they end up, you know, eating unnecessarily, and then they get angry on themselves, and then they want to walk and they want to do running and everything. So I've got a set idea. If you want to go for a health run with your family, with your friends, or with that small group that you have, then we have Banjara's Manthan. It's a super salubrious, green, lush, green, six-acre plot where you can go for nice, long health runs. So Manthan is very much available where you can go either for runs or if you need to have any kind of a workshop or if you want to uh, you know celebrate any functions it can be of the likes of uh, engagements or a birthday party there was this birthday party of uh, and a huge family had come because they were celebrating the birthday party of one of their uh, members who turned 50 so he joined the 50 club so there was a you know huge bash of all the family members so there was some nice singing and some nice remembering of all those good old times. It also has, you know, cozy rooms and nice dormitory rooms where uh, if you all have a big, nice uh, young cousins uh, group, so you all shack up at the dormitory and then have your chats and uh, remember all those happy days and celebrate. And after your celebration, when you are too tired, you can just go and take a chill pill there as they call it. And you can even uh, relax, sleep. So that facility is also there at uh, Manthan. Marriages also have uh, taken place because there is a excellent uh, stage available where uh, all the functions can happen. And it's a huge uh, area where, you know, with the pandal, it's so open to uh, greenery, fresh air. So that can also be uh, done at uh, Manthan. And uh, of course, yes, we do have a lot of our, um, uh, what do you say, our functions. That is the convocation. Last week, if you recollect, Anis had shown you the thing. No? So things like that. And now what I was actually doing in the morning was um, meeting a lot of parents. They uh, have been you know, coming very regularly. We have got fully packed with the students and parents who want career counseling done for their uh, children. So a very holistic uh, career assessment is uh, done at the academy. So any one of your, uh, you know, uh, folks who is confused about what to do, when to do, in, including after retirement also, you can go ahead and, you know, uh, ask them to come here. Of course, yes, you know that uh, career counseling is totally free as is any other counseling. And with that, spending that 20, 25 minutes understanding careers will actually help them to have an excellent career path for themselves even till 75, 80 years of age. So that is something which I thought I should let you know. We are bombarded with so many calls and with um, if anyone in your family circles, friend circles who would want this, please send them to Banjara and we'll be more than happy to spend time with them. And with that, we'll answer your questions and over to Ali. Ciao. Bye. Ah, hi again. Yes, let's start off with your comments and your questions. We start with Chandrika. Chandrika, welcome back after a long time. I'm seeing your name here. Yes, Ali says Chandrika. The recent killing of the young guy working at the tool, to toll booth was indeed sad. The perpetrator wanted to take revenge for the delay and exchange of angry words. Yes, this is what I said. Whether it is road rage, whether it is mob mentality, these are all indicators that somewhere deep down there is pent up anger. 
there is frustration which comes out in most unexpected forms. Since this was a public place, it came out in the media, but the type of violence that people in, inflict on their own family members or their children does not even come out in the open and it is happening very, very regularly here and uh, there. Chandika also said, what do we do if the person refuses to accept responsibility for their anger? Yes, that's what I said. No, the person says, I'm not angry. Who said I'm angry? I'm only, you know, getting upset because this, this, this was not done. That one is provoking me and all that. Don't contradict. Don't say you are a short-tempered person. In fact, to start off with, accept it. Yes, I do understand that you're getting provoked. I do understand that you are under stress. Accept it. Be that sponge. When things cool down, you bring it out and say, how do we deal with this? Isn't there a better method of dealing with it? Last time when this, this, this happened, you got upset and then you were shouting and then I got upset and all this happened. No, let us see how we can prevent that from uh, happening. So please let us sit down and work out what can be done without accusing the person that you are a short tempered person. Rina says, great topic to deal with. All of us go through anger. It is natural. I think if you drink lots of water, anger, yes, Rina. All these are very simple, free of cost, very easily accessible. Air and water are two great blessings from nature, which can really help us in so many ways. Drinking water, taking deep breath, going out and looking far away into nature or into the sky and things like that. These go a long way in reducing your uh, anger levels. Ah, Asha says at times in PAM meetings, it becomes very difficult when parents hide the faults of children and become very angry with teacher when the teacher, in fact, is generally trying to help the pupil how to overcome the shortcomings. Yes, Asha, I've seen this happening so many times. And the funny thing is, it happens in reverse also. I know of so many you know, teachers saying that parents are unreasonable. So it's a ding dong battle. They forget that parents and teachers are both working towards the welfare of the child. They are partners. They are not opponents. I strongly recommend that there should be parent teacher meetings in which no comment on children, no accusations, no pointing fingers. Just have brainstorming. What can we do as a team to build this up? If any school takes up that initiative, we are there to help. I don't mind participating in such programs also, but it can go a long way to set right this unnecessary conflict between parents and teachers. Ah. Yes, Sasha also says it, it is parent teacher meeting. Yes, that's right. I know. I saw that. It is not PAM, but it is parent-teacher uh, uh, meeting. And that's why I said that. That is why these things uh, do uh, happen. Sri Devi says, thank you, Dr. Ali and team Banjara. Blessed morning. Yes, that's right. And if you notice, you know, when you are with good people, like how we are together in this thing, we are not in the same room. We are not physically together, which I would have loved to have. But even when we are virtually together, you see, I would tell you, that even this Saturday FB live interaction that we have helps to bring down frustration, anger, irritability, because you start looking at a bigger picture of life. And that is what we are all looking at, isn't it? The moment you start looking at the bigger uh, uh, picture, the moment you start understanding that I have also contributed in some way to the anger or to the unpleasantness, things start getting much, much better. You can do it. It's not very difficult. It takes a little bit of empathy, a little bit of patience, and a little bit of understanding that we have to work as a team. Both of us together have to work towards uh, this. Riddhi says, if somebody is going to start a new relationship with a person whom they doubt that they have low tolerance levels, how can they check if you really have anger issues? I remember a Bollywood movie in which this guy is giving advice to a young girl as to how to assess this uh, boy whom she's going to go and meet in the coffee shop uh, 
you know, for the first time. He says, don't bother about how he talks to you or how he treats you. You are his prospective girlfriend, so he's going to be exceptionally nice to you. Look at the way he deals with people on the road. Look at the way he deals with the auto rickshaw driver. Look at the way he calls the waiter once you go and sit in the restaurant and the waiter doesn't come for a few minutes. That is what will show you his true picture. As you go along, purposely take him into areas or places where there is some level of conflict, some crowded place, somewhere where you have to stand for a long time in the queue, somewhere where service is not very good, and you see how he handles it. Same way, if possible, go to that person's house and just sit and relax while he's chatting with his other family members or other people. See how he interacts with friends. Make a group and go out somewhere. Not just for an hour for a dinner, but maybe for a picnic where you are spending three, four uh, hours. Keep observing how he behaves with, even with his own friends. If you are observant, you will get this. And particularly because you said that when you are in a doubt that they have to low tolerance levels. The moment that doubt comes in, you must work on it. You must not ignore it just because the person is being nice to you at this uh, uh, person. Okay, we have another very interesting comment. Shobha says, when someone is angry, he treats me badly. There are two things to it, Shobha. Firstly, you know, is he, uh, is he angry with you or is he taking out his anger or frustration of other things on uh, you? The second point is, is he angry only with you or is he angry with other people? Over a period of time, observe. You will see a pattern. The first point that I had said in my slide, if you remember, was that observe his triggers. Observe his anger patterns, what makes him angry. Once you get that, you yourself will have a lot of clarity as to how to deal with the person. For any reason, you do not get that uh, 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 clarity, then you seek help. Then we can sit together and we can look into it. Purni was just telling you that all types of counseling is free with us. It's confidential also. We can do it on face to face. We can do it on phone. We can do it through email. But don't let go. If there is somebody in your life who every now and then tends to become angry and take out the anger on uh, uh, you and treats you badly, I think you deserve to do lead a better quality of life without getting into major conflict or without declaring a war. There are ways and means we can talk about it. Assertiveness, as I mentioned earlier, is one of those uh, techniques which really um, helps. Roshan says, from my experience, it is the genes that affect a person. Grandfather short-tempered, father hot-tempered, and his children naturally will be losing their temper very fast. I belong to a family where my ancestors were short-tempered. Trying my best to be calm and not to react when somebody provokes me as my health is important. Absolutely, Roshan. But I would just like to add one more thing to it. It is not just the genetics as in DNA. It is role modeling. When grandfather was short-tempered, father observed him from childhood. When father became hot-tempered as he grew up, his children are following the same thing. So a lot of this happens not because of some biological genetic or DNA or something, but because of observing and imbibing what the other person uh, does. Yes, we have a nice uh, and very thought provoking comment from Ranjita. When a man screams at his children in public, but does not acknowledge or accept that he is wrong and how it is affecting the children, how can we handle it? First thing as I told you is, do not confront him there in public in front of uh, uh, you know um, others. Do not you know create a conflict situation. Try to have some distraction when he is screaming. Oh, we have this ice cream parlor here. Can we buy some ice cream for the uh, children? Or uh, let me just check out this shop and this, or maybe even send away the child saying that. Just go to the corner and uh, that restaurant. They know. Just check out what they have in the menu and come back. So if you can create a distraction at that time, then empathize with the person who is, uh, you know, uh, screaming. I know that you are very angry right now. I know that you have been disturbed. 
show that empathy let things calm off come back when the children are not around then you talk to him and say i do understand that you are being provoked and you are getting very irritated but can we try and find alternative means to make the children more discipline i have some suggestions you bring out your suggestion we'll see what can be done this is how it goes and it can be done it is not impossible i assure you very very often all these uh, uh, things that we are talking about over here are day to day situations which people face in life it is just that you have to learn the correct techniques you know if you get some cough or a fever or cold or something there are always these grandma's uh, remedies you don't have to go running to the doctor every time that's why even for this you don't have to go running to a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist or somebody but yes it does help because for mental health and emotional issues there are no grandma remedies there are counselors there are you know good intention friends these are the people who can help you you can do it it is not very difficult develop that intention and that motivation to be able to uh, do it and i'm really glad that those of you who logged in today are interested in these type of topics because that gives me a motivation that gives me that feeling that yes there is something that we all can do together it's not just some gyan that i am giving you there's a lot of learning from each one of you and when we all put our heads together we find even the sharing which is taking place just now gives an idea to many of us that yes others are also going through it i'm not the only victim i'm not the only one who is suffering or having to go through it others also go through the thing here are real life people many of whom i know personally and when they share truthfully you know that yes this is what is uh, uh, happening and this is what we do so like this you know we go on with these uh, things and every saturday we try to come out with something uh, like that so as i wind up this uh, today's uh, program anish is going to tell you what is the topic next week and i also wanted to leave you with this very interesting uh, message that after that fb tomorrow uh, the next saturday i'm going to go and record this uh, you know ted uh, uh, talk on transformative conversations which is another i think excellent tool which you can use towards making uh, you know people understand next saturday when we meet at 11 o'clock as usual we'll be talking about a phenomenon which is increasing quite significantly uh, uh, nowadays you will come across people young uh, people sometimes old people also why not i knew of a lady who at 75 years of age you know went into a living relationship with an 80 year old uh, gentleman and they lived happily ever after till one of them uh, passed away so we will talk about this phenomenon whether you believe in it or not whether you have moral stand on it or not that is secondary we don't you know interfere in those matters but we talk about the practical aspects of some of these things of life one of them being this uh, you know thing of uh, living uh, um, relationship i have two more quick questions we shall do that and then we will you know wind up the uh, sessions one is from uh, roshan being assertive helps in keeping and giving yourself a peaceful life and somebody comes to your house with dogs whom you don't like running on your sofas you know what peace we received after they yeah that's what it is roshan these are all part of life when we keep facing these uh, uh, things and uh, uh, yes madhavi says i become uh reason to my closed ones anger even my small things they get provoked it's not your fault madhavi please don't blame yourself don't say i become the reason if somebody is short tempered and if somebody is taking out their anger it is their problem but what you do need to do and what you should do is to work on these tips and techniques that i said to ensure that you are not at the receiving end we would like to see all such people like you whenever they come across this difficult circumstances how to improve them if you can do it by yourself excellent if you can take the help of family members or friends also it's very good otherwise there are counselors like in banjara so many other places also so many lovely counselors all over different cities you can take their help and ensure that you move on to a good and a better quality of life so until next saturday i would say bye bye to you we will meet at 11 o'clock on saturday the 17th of june bye bye and have a nice weekend